Hello everybody and welcome to another Doctor Who review. This time it's the last of Paul McGann's first Big Finish monthly adventure season, Minuet in Hell. So here we are, another Doctor Who review, the last one for Who Month. Hope you enjoyed them all. It's certainly turning out at the time of recording to be a good one for Storm Warning. Don't know about the others, we'll find out what's happening with them as time goes on. But at the time of recording, Storm Warning's doing pretty well, so thank you for that guys. Much appreciated. Anyway, let's get into the story itself. A, a rambling plot line for Minuet and Hell. So, it opens with the Doctor kind of gone mad in a, what seems to be an institution. Charlie has been separated and also has seems to have lost her memory a little bit and is saddled in to be one of the satin bottom girls of the Hellfire Club, a club that's been created in a breakaway part of Maryland named Maribolgia. Maribolgia is currently trying to get statehood and Brigham Elijah Dashwood III is trying to run for governor. Dashwood has a bit more to him and and is dabbling in experiments with a Psi 859 machine which has been used to correct the mental illnesses of people who have gone a bit insane. The doctor is sitting beside a gentleman who calls himself Gideon Crane but then later reveals Gideon makes himself out to be the doctor. Charlie meanwhile becomes friends with one of the other satin bottom girls, Becky Lee, and both of them manage to escape the night that they're taken. Becky Lee and Charlie escape to her grandfather, Waldo Pickering, who also is running to be governor of Maribolgia. Brigham is not only utilising the Psy Machine to correct the minds of the insane, but also utilising it to help generate spirits and demons to come through to propagate and rule the earth. The machine is being used to effectively transfer out the memories of senators and people of power and replace them with demons, effectively becoming an army of stooges, eventually president of the United States. He's assisted by Dr. Dale Pargeter, who happens to have romantic feelings for Brigham, who plays off against that. The doctor, meanwhile, has actually taken to the Psy Machine and ends up effectively breaking it because his psychic energy is so great. Within all this, investigating about the Psy Machine is Brigadier Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart. The Brigadier is posing undercover as a potential helper to the creating state of Maribolgia, but obviously, under normal circumstances, he's working for UNIT or the UN as usual. The Brig meets up with Charlie after Waldo Pickering is taken over by one of the demons. Charlie escapes, ends up getting to the Hellfire Club, and almost ends up becoming a Saturn Bottom Girl again. Lepre Stewart manages to make her escape, but in the meantime, Lepre Stewart has met up with Becky Lee, who believes that Gideon Crane is the Doctor. The Brig, obviously having no idea who the new regeneration of the Doctor is, kind of believes it, but then eventually realises when Charlie picks him out that the Doctor is a different man. The Doctor's memories start to come back to him and a plan was used for people who are in a catatonic state to have the Doctor's psychic energy and memories copied into them. This allows the Doctor to fix his memories and then he tricks Crane to use the Psy Machine. Crane is then fixed and realises that the Doctor is actually the real Doctor. What happened was they were trying to release Ramsey into the Vortex and the Doctor miscalculated. The Vortex brought the TARDIS crashing down and Crane just happened to be nearby. The psychic shock made Charlie initially lose her memory and the Doctor go a little insane, taking longer to restore his memory. It also ensured that Gideon Crane thought that he was the Doctor. Brigham's plans come to a head. Pickering is returned from the Demon and Partiture is killed by the Demon just before, after Becky Lee is taken hostage. Dashwood uses a demon who's taken over Pickering to make Pickering withdraw his request for governor. And as Dashwood is making his way to make an announcement to the nation about his governorship properly, there's a hot mic being left by the Brigadier, who the Doctor and Charlie 
join just as Dashwood was going to the studio. The break fakes heart problems and goes up to the gallery, where he presses a few buttons to broadcast out to people and supporters. It dashes Dashwood's plans. But Dashwood is a devil worshipper and wants the demons to rule over him. The demons decide he's not worth it and he gets defeated. That's really your plot line. Quite in depth, I quite enjoyed this story overall and I'll go into the details about that in a moment. But let's go into the, the characters and just go through them. We'll start of course, as always, with the Doctor, played by Paul McGann. Do you know what? Paul McGann does rambling good. <laughs> Even I can't say that right. Paul McGann does rambling in a very interesting way. The fact he's always thinking, he's always trying to run through things and figure out who he is and why, is really nice to see and I really quite like the way it's been portrayed. He definitely has now found his niche of who he is as the Doctor. That whimsical bohemian character that's been building up over the four stories comes to its climax here. And it's quite a clever device to have the Doctor effectively lose his memory for two thirds of the story, which then allows the audience to then understand the traits of the Doctor and understand the character that McGann wants to play as the Doctor in more detail. And it's good to have that contrast of Gideon Crane to do that. McGann works well with everything he's got here. Again, I don't think he reads it. I think he is getting the emotional in here. If he is, it's not as obvious as Peter Davison was initially when he was doing his first couple of scripts for Big Finish. So ultimately, I think it's a better situation that we have here with this story and with this Doctor. And McGann is starting to put his own input into the Doctor and make it more mature and it's making it work better for me and I do like it for that reason. Indy Fisher's Charlie, the character is, is more or less there now. She's kind of self-independent. The character kind of reminds me of a mix of Sarah Jane Smith with the intrigued get ourselves into scrape situation. It's kind of like an early 2000s idea of what a companion would be. Yes, I know she comes from 1930, but it's an interesting way of developing the character to have those kind of insights of the, the spunkiness and the, and the fun that, that some of the later companions of the classic series have and the kind of sarcastic modern twist that you don't really get with many companions. This kind of dry wit and this kind of sarcasm that Charlie has throughout the four stories continues here when she's making comments not just to the Doctor but to other characters like Pickering when he's in his demon form and Pargeter when she's causing issues with Charlie as well. It's really well done. I really quite like it. And I think it's quite a nice little performance. I'll come back to Nick Courtney, Nicholas Courtney with Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart. Robert Jezik, recently, who played Frobisher in The Holy Terror, is back as Eliza Dashwood III. All the characters who have American accents in here, they don't all hit the spot 100% for me. So Jezik is interesting because, he, you know, he's, he's Canadian. But he sounds the least authentic American of them all. And it doesn't come across as a, a truly authentic performance. It's interesting. It's, it's an interesting take on American accents. And most of the actors who are playing the American accents here, they, they do struggle a little bit in regard to some of the things they say. Jessica's probably the one that doesn't hit the most of the character to believability that he is American here. It's very much a British version of American here that you hear in this story. And it kind of takes away a little bit. Dashwood himself is an interesting character, very manipulative, the devil worshipping and his kind of preacher evangelical stance is really nice to see and I quite like the way it's performed. I think Jesse has, does a good job with what he gets, I just think the accent's slightly off. We then have Morgan Deer playing Waldall Pickering. This one's okay, I like this kind of southern, southern drawl that he has a little bit which is really quite fun and I really quite like it and I think it, it, it works quite well with this kind of older, gruffer character. I, I like the way it's portrayed, and Deer is voice treated, I believe, for the monster that goes with Venom, which is really nice to, to have. And it's it's actually well performed both sides of this one. I think I think it's played very well by Morgan Deer, and it gives you a character that, yeah, he's a little bit annoying as a senator initially, but you know he's got a heart of gold, and it does come across rather quickly. We've got Helen Goldwyn making another appearance in here, this time with a meteor role. She's playing Becky Lee Kowalczyk. She's effectively Charlie's mate in this. She is one of the main drivers of the story at certain parts. It's a lovely little part and it shows Helen Goldwood's acting chops in a different way, which you wouldn't have got in some of the other stories. It's nice she's got a meaty role here because she's got more lighter roles in other stories. And it's nice to have a better, longer, meatier role here for her because she's, she's quite good when she gets the material. I just think she doesn't get enough of some of them, which is interesting in itself. 
We got Dale Partridge played by Maureen Oakley. Interesting enough character. I quite like the way the character's played, but it's kind of like a lovesick scientist. She has got that ruthlessness there with the sign machine and that, which is interesting. And I, I quite like the way it's played, but it's not the standout performance for me. We've then got Gideon Cray, which is Nicholas Briggs trying to do his version of the Doctor, <laughs> basically. Because if you don't know the history of Big Finish, basically uh, Jason Hegg Gallery, Gally Russell and Nicholas Briggs are all part of something called Audiovisuals in the early 90s. And basically Nicholas Briggs played a version of the Doctor. And this is Nicholas Briggs given his opportunity to do that in an official spin-off canon, playing Gideon Crane. Very upper crust. I do like the way it's performed. And it's a nice little performance from Nicholas Briggs. And it's actually nice to have him not do any monster, just having a character. It's a nice turn. I'll go back to Nicholas Courtney. This is the second appearance of Courtney as the Brigadier. And he just has to say a couple of words and you get the gravitas of the character. He really does understand how it works. I like the play they have with the Brigadier when he's trying to use technology with the dial-up to get messages over to Whitehall and that for MI6 when he's doing his investigations. I think it's quite nice the way it's been portrayed here. And this is a Brigadier who's obviously a lot more comfortable, a lot more established in his role and who he is. And has very much been influenced with the Doctor. He has a better role in the Spectre Lanyon more. This one's more like a, it's a kind of tech box exercise initially for the Big Finish guys to make sure that the Eighth Doctor goes with the Brig because they just fill in the gaps that they wouldn't have on the television series because they did that with the Sixth Doctor. It's still a nice little role. It's nice having the Brig slightly out of England and in America and the comments he makes are very comical in regards to his disregard to some of the American things and the way they work and it's interesting the way it comes across and I quite like the way it's played and I think he is the standout guest star here he just brings an extra level to it which really makes the the performance work well for me we've got the plot lines and the interesting bits I get the sense that this is a kind of unofficial sequel to Mind of Evil the third Doctor story because that used a sign machine and that, and the sign machine was used to correct the minds of criminals in that one, and it happened to be an alien machine. It's not the same race, if I remember rightly, but it's an interesting take on that kind of thing being used for another nefarious purpose, this time to be used to, you know, take over important, powerful people with these demons, these demons that were revealed as signivores in the fourth episode. I think it's quite a lovely plot line and it does have remnants of Mind of Evil in regard to some of the bases of the machine itself. And having the Brigadier come in there and have some sort of foreknowledge, not just from what he's been briefed, but obviously from the experience he had with Mind and Evil, which is kind of hinted but it's not actually directly said, is really an interesting concept. That technically is probably the biggest thing I think is interesting about the story is it seems to me like a sequel. To mind of evil in some respects and it's an interesting take on the story i quite like it i think it's quite fun and it's quite enjoyable and it's worth listening to for that i think it's written pretty solidly alan w Lear obviously had the main treatment gary ross was coming and helped out with it by the looks of it i quite like the idea of, of having this evangelical who's quite a satan worshipper trying to get power it kind of resonates a little bit with the politics of america now <laughs> 20 years later to a small extent and I suppose that's where I'm enjoying the take really because it's kind of like a what if of what what America would be like if we get somebody nuts trying to get into politics but it's done in a kind of early 2000s way where it's not seen the, the, the big ramifications we have now it's quite sweet I quite like the plot line here the main cast members get a lot to do none of them really are left wanting in regards to the roles they have the interplay and the balance between them is quite good Nicholas Briggs directs this I think it's a bit tighter in the direction this one I don't think the characters are left to breathe as much as the one that he did previously Sword of Orion I think this one's more a case of there is a bit more direction to what they have here I think it works for it but there definitely still is that interplay and that rapport building you get between the characters that you don't necessarily get in some of the other stories. And I think it's really, really fun for it. And I think it's quite a nice little direction as well. And the music from William Allen, it doesn't really affect anything here. It's not like Stones of Venice where you get the cliffhangers, which are a bit artificial <laughs> with the music build-ups, I think. This one is, is more grounded. It works better and is better set up and it doesn't, to tract the story I think it works very steadily and it works very well and I do enjoy the story more because of that I do like this story I think it works quite well it's certainly a candidate for four TARDIS out of five but 
I just think there's something missing that it's a good story, but it's something missing to put that extra element for me. So for that, I'm going to give this a rating of three and a half TARDISes out of five. Okay, let's see how that review shapes up with the rest of the stories for Big Finish that I've reviewed so far. Minuet in Hell sits in with the vast majority of the Big Finish audio reviews I've done so far. Our selected list include Phantasmagoria, The Fearmonger, Red Dawn, The Shadow of the Scourge, The Mutant Phase, and Sword of Orion. At the bottom is two stories with three titles out of five. They are Land of the Dead and Winter for the Adept, and at the top is the Apocalypse Element with four and a half TARDISes out of five. That's it for this review. Tell me what you think about Minuet and Hell. Leave a comment down below. Do you like it? Leave a comment down below. Do you not like it? Leave a comment down below. That's the end for Who Month. Thank you very much, guys, for watching and listening to these reviews and enjoying the videos this month. Videos are released every Sunday at 4pm GMT. And if you like what you see, Please like this video, like it, and share it with the hashtag TeamStructor. Also, hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell so you know when a new video comes out. If you want to help more on the socials, you can go to the YouTube community tab. You can go to X, formerly Twitter. You can go to the Facebook page. You can go to Patreon, and you can go to Instagram. All you need to do to search the socials is search DeanStructor. I am back next Sunday with the very last StreamStructor for the foreseeable future. The last of the year, certainly. More information about that and everything, keep an eye. The schedule will come out in a couple of days' time for December. Keep an eye on that. But I will see you then, so I hope you can join me for that. But until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching and, of course, listening. And do you know what? I'll see you later.